Hey everybody, it is Wednesday, May, what, are, what day is today? May 24th, and I'm coming to you with a market update. Um, I was a naughty girl last week and didn't bring it to you. I apologize for that. Um, there was a lot going on and I was doing some professional development classes and it slipped my mind and I apologize. So uh, today I thought we would do uh, a game of Hilo Buffalo, which is um, kind of fun and something that my family does at the dinner table. How we do it is you share something great from your day, you share a failure that you learned from and you share something fun, crazy, kooky, or unexpected. What that means real estate wise is that we look at some of the most expensive listings in the market and some of the lowest expense, the, the least, ex the lowest expensive, the least expensive listings in the market. And then we um, look for a unicorn that could be an alternative somewhere in the middle that I think is just a really cool, awesome listing. So with that, let's crack into it. On the high side, we have this listing down on Montgomery Street, listed for 775. I think it's a great house. I think the market is saying that that list price is probably a little bit high, um, but I know lots of folks are looking at it and it's super juicy. We love the garages, we love the view, we have all the things. Um, this is on Montgomery Street at Newburgh, so you do have a little sound pollution coming from River Road down below, but you're up high enough that, um, you know, it's really not an issue. I actually love this neighborhood um, and live nearby. Um, People also usually ask me when we're seeing houses on that side of Montgomery Street, can the land below it ever be developed? The answer is yes. The city owns that land between River Road and those houses on the top of Montgomery Street. And actually the land um, at the end of the street um, at the intersection of Montgomery and South Street is slated for redevelopment. There was a request for proposal put out from this by the city last year and a developer has been earmarked as the um, sort of preferred developer for that piece of land and that project is snaking its way um, just in the beginning stages of going through the planning board approval process. So it is something to consider with regards to this house in particular and houses on that block, the land falls very steeply away. So even if an extremely tall building was built below you can, with a connection to River Road, um, which is difficult because that's a Department of State road. Um, so interacting and making curb cuts onto that street are, it's doable, it's just very time consuming and fussy because you're dealing with the State uh, Department of Transportation. Um, which I'm sure they're lovely people. It's just a lot of bureaucracy beyond just working with the municipality. But suffice it to say that a building would have to be very, very tall, um, taller than what would typically be allowed in that zoning overlay to obstruct your view. Um, but you know, it might not be bushes forever. So that's the high in the market. Um, the low is 39 Edward, which I'm super excited. Um, oh, I should say also the Montgomery Street house is listed by Rosemary Lee. She's lovely, not taking credit for her listing. Um, credit where credit is due. Um, big, big fan of Rosemary over the years. I think she's a fantastically stylish woman. Um, the low in the high low Buffalo is 39 Edward. It's the lowest price mark house on the market in Newburgh right now. I love this house and was in it in a number of years ago. This listing is being put by forth by um, Lee Raphael, who is handling properties owned by the city of Newburgh, which is a cool little gig that he got a couple years ago um, through a request before I was an agent or before I was a broker. Um, so Lee has this listing. It's a really cool corner lot next to the Foundry condo complex, which is being fantastically redeveloped. Um, phase three, so the Riverview side of those condos are being constructed now. And there's also an approved condo development for artist lofts on Colden Street. So Colden and Edward streets are um, running parallel to each other. So there'll be some other really cool um, like artist loft condos developed in that area. This is right around the street. Edward Street is small. You don't always know about it because it's sort of one block that's all residential, so you wouldn't be going there, but it's right around the corner from um, Grow, the plant shop, um, and this is a laundromat that they just painted pink and sort <laughs> of like that run of, of, of Liberty Street, which is also running perpendicular. This is a cool building. Um, it's listed really low. I think it will go incredibly fast. So the rub is that because it is a city-owned property, you will have to, or one would have to be an owner occupant in the house for a certain number of years. Um, I haven't looked at um, 
at the at the requirements but you it, for the specific number of years it's usually five years but that may have changed um so um if anybody's interested in that property we can dig into that piece of of detail but um at any rate you, one would be required to purchase the property renovate it over the course of 18 months and then um, live in it for a certain number of years before you could do anything else with it um, and if you decided to sell it within that owner occupied period typically that's possible but you have to sell it on to another owner occupant until that restrictive covenant it's called is lifted um uh from the property by the city of Newburgh, which is sort of a paperwork and approval process. And if you do what you're supposed to do, then no problem, it sort of happens and the city is very helpful. Um, but I think that's a fantastic house. Those houses on that block, there's a couple rows of blocks of houses in Newburgh that are built right on top of the dirt. <laughs> there's a house, I've sold a couple houses on South Street, sort of the 174, 176, um, below the, um, below the uh, what's that called, a monastery. Um, where the Franciscan monks live, the monkery, I don't know what it's called, it's certainly not called that, um, but where the Franciscan monks live down the hill, there's that cool row of townhouses that sit up on the hill and also the row of townhouses on Edward Street. Um, just because of how they were constructed, they don't have basements, so you go in on the first floor and that flooring is basically right on the dirt, um, So, which is fine. I mean, if the dirt is dry, the wood stays dry, you're fine, you can you know, float other flooring on top of it, but if something should go awry in that situation, um, it can be a little a little iffy, but you know, it's not structurally supporting the house It's it's the house is supported from the corners I'm not playing at being a structural engineer, but you know, whatever I've, I've investigated a lot of these houses with with um, with clients But it's just an interesting oddity that there's in this house and other houses on that block There's no basement which someone is always looking for and you have to accommodate mechanicals you know, obviously nowadays we have uh, like wall mounted hot water, um, hot water heaters that are like little internet router size, bigger than an internet router, but you know, they're very compact and they can fit in a, a slim closet rather than having to take up a huge um, space for a furnace and a hot, you know, hot water tanks for all of the, the units should someone want to make that a multi-unit. So I think that listing will go get a lot of very fast and furious attention and some people will be put off by the owner occupant requirement um, if they were looking at it straight as, as a straight investment. But I think this is a fantastic opportunity for somebody to live in one and rent the other or convert this back to a single family home. Um, it's a cool building. You can see in the front of it that it was originally a storefront. It's, it's been bricked in to be a regular, sort of like a regular size window, but you can see in the brick that it was originally a store. Um, and I don't have details um, about the original owners but I did hear along the way talking about that listing that, you know, it was a family from Italy that moved and they had a business and, you know, it was sort of like this um, Newburgh early, early 1900s immigrant story, which is um, a huge part of Newburgh's history, which, which I just love to love to know about. Um, and I would say for our Buffalo, I would um, propose that the listing on Susan Drive um, that's being put forth by Keller Williams um, brokerage is it's Susan Drive, like it's town of Newburgh, right? We're outside of the city limits. We have a great view of the ridge, the river. Um, Susan Drive, River Road, that whole area of, of Bombville just outside of Newburgh is so lovely and um, peaceful. There's a mix, mishmash, mix and match of different kinds of houses. There was a lot of construction happening in that area through the 70s. So you can nab these really interesting sort of mid-century modern houses in various degrees of like post original design disruption um and and also there's some like a little bit of here and there mcmansion action out there which some people like some people don't um but i think this is a really cool listing um that brings a lot that's very valuable um the taxes in town of newburgh are very um, stable not necessarily low but you know they typically don't accelerate as quickly as we see them accelerating in the city of newburgh sometimes everybody is like in their drama yesterday was the the deadline for the tax grievance papers in newburgh so um that's another part of the reason that um 
I could use that as an excuse for missing last week was was helping people pull comps and kind of having a lot of conversations about how taxes in the city of Newburgh work. Um, we have a lot. Um, you know, we have we have um, a hospital and a, and a college that that aren't that aren't paying taxes because they got a good deal. We also have a dedicated um, police department and fire department that everybody likes benefiting from, but you know, it's rough paying for it. So I totally understand the strife, and I'm always happy to talk to people about um, strategies for using um, the 444A tax exemption, state historical tax credits. These are sort of hacks um, and ways that you can decrease your tax bill without um, sort of having to like brave hard it into battle <laughs> on the assessment, which everybody you know gets very excited to do, um, you know every every year, every three years when there's the citywide assessment. But I think, well, I know um, that there are sort of more reasoned, strategic steps um, that one can take, availing of tax credits, which are a lot less exciting than like like ah brave hearting into battle um there's a lot of paperwork it can be um a little tedious especially with state historical tax credits but there are resources there are consultants that you can hire for not a lot of money to help you with these things the 4448 tax exemption administered by the city is is really straightforward and easy to understand there's one sheet of paperwork for it um, but you do have to do things in the right order and have a plan and stick to it and meet deadlines for those sort of things. So I'm always open, um, even though the, the grievance deadline has passed, there is still a relevant conversation about how can you um, navigate taxes in the city of Newburgh and in other municipalities of, of, um, of the Hudson Valley. So I'm always game for those practical, technical, action step based kind of conversations. So anyways, this is the market update and I hope to talk to you soon. Bye bye.